Let the minutes reflect that nobody has else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. Six or seven. All right. The by board agenda. So, uh, first quarter financial update. Okay, we just need uh, David to call the finance committee. Oh, David, can you call the finance committee meeting to order, please? Yep, I'll go ahead. Uh, call the finance committee meeting for April 12th, 2023 to order. We have Paul Benjamin, myself, and uh, I think Amy is there in person, and Andy will be joining us shortly. I'm sorry, what? Can you move it? Alex. What? Look at your screen, please. I think Andy has joined us. All right, all set? Yes. All right. Well, we are leading off tonight with the um, year to date quarterlies, which we just we rushed this week and got them done this morning so that you would have it. I know when we did the budget book, um, the, qu the, the quarterly, um, the first chapter is on providing the financial year to state year to date through the first quarter um, for the first half of the year, which is the second quarter ending December 31, 2022. And that's a good way to get an idea of where we stand financially as far as our projections for revenues and where we stand with the expenditures from the budget that was previously voted for 23. So um, it works out nicely that we just finished March and that we now have the March year to date. So we have in, uh, information through the third quarter. So um, I know the finance committee is going to present its budget tonight. So as a, as a premise for that, I'm gonna start with the quarterly reports and I won't take too long on them. I know we've got a lot to do tonight. So the first one is for uh, general funds. Can I just refer them to the paper that you're- Yes, they, I, like, if, if we could just take just one moment. Oh. Um, Cause I didn't have them and they weren't loaded in board docs. So I just need just one moment to get them up so they can see them. Yeah, I have it in your email, but yes. Yes, it was, you know, if you have those, it was in the email. I didn't see the email today. That's was um, it later today. Oh, it was today, but I think, yeah. are, you, are you saying you're going to put it on share? I am. Okay. Okay. Give, me, yep. give me two seconds, and in theory, it will work. And I just, I missed that and all the fun of reading. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, and you're doing general funds first, is that correct? General funds is first. <clears throat> so year to date through the third quarter, we have collected or collector has collected 10,388,585. Can you make that bigger please? Which is the first column in the green. The first column is headed real estate and personal property taxes. And it is ten million dollars. I guess I will turn and face the screen then. Where did you get that on the screen? Okay. I can't see and the that. next I can't, I, I can't see this. And, uh, can you see it, Joyce? No. Okay. okay. Linda, if you would let them do the consent agenda real quick and give me a few moments, I will get it into board docs. It, so if y'all would like to do that, hit pause on this. Let me get board docs up or get these loaded into board docs so y'all can see them. Perfect. Okay. It just, it, I can't go super fast on it. So if y'all just give me a few moments, I'll get it in there. All right. Moving to the consent agenda. We have AP 2341S, AP 2341, AP 2340, AP 2340S, AP 234V, PR 2319, minutes from January 4th, 2023, January 18th, 2023, February 15th, 2023. Block party requests and no parking signs for Cozier Drive. Fire department permit fees update, town administrator contract approval, Carolyn Brennan, park and recreation director, Amy Jennings. So, so moved. 
Second. I have a motion by Molly, a second by Amy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's like I'm out of here tonight. <laughs> Shall I go into public comment? Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go into public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? So please That's raise your hand. Andy? <laughs> no, 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 it's my ass. That's your hand? <laughs> That's great. Just a cursor. <laughs> All right. <Nothing> <laughs> no public comment. <clears throat> All right. Amazing. <laughs> Where's Tony tonight? <laughs> I'm in the truck. Oh, did you? I'll <laughs> come in. Put him under the seat. You know he's probably watching. Anything. No, it's just from the email. That is true. Y'all all have it in your email. And I actually do have two copies, two extra copies of the general fund one. Two, two, one. Email. I know it's just Thanks, well, get the email. The more I'm, I'm, thank you. I can share. The more I'm I'm trying to share. Share. All right. Eight. So we're looking why at I understand. I've been in the question. All right. Hey, <laughs> found it. No. If y'all both have paper copies, am I okay to load it back up how I had it? Yeah, I don't have it for the other. You need one. I just okay. I have my resources out here. I can see that. I know it's there. Yeah, I can see it. I'm not gonna be able to get them up quick enough, and, and, and I don't want to slow them. One thing we can do um, to make it larger is just to focus in on the green columns. If you can just make it larger and and disregard the furthest to the you right. You got it. It's not that important. I can I can read those percentages. Okay, then let's try this again, everybody. Thank you for your patience. It works much better. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Mm -hmm. Um okay, so the green columns are our 50 uh FY23 actuals um year to date. So through March, the first column is real estate and personal property taxes. We've uh, earned, uh, we have taken in almost ten point four million dollars. That, um, if you just scoop down a couple, uh, that is seventy four point eighty three, almost seventy five percent of our actuals uh, in real estate. Um, seventy four seventy four point eight three percent of what we were anticipating for the year. This compares to pretty much the same numbers, like seventy five. Uh, percent or so for FY22 and FY21. And for those looking at the full document, the 22 uh, columns are in white and the FY21 are in pink. So we're really pretty much spot on and we know we're going to collect all of that money that they do every year. So that's going to be just fine. Our local receipts is the next column. And this is pretty impressive that we have 83.43% of what we, we anticipated collecting for the entire year. And we have no reason to expect that we're not going to get that uh, that full amount that was um, that was projected. So we're we're going to take in most likely all of, at least uh, of all of the revenue that we projected and then some by the end of the year. You can see uh, for the prior two years the local receipts we had collected almost seventy two percent in twenty two and. Um, 67% in 21. So 83% is pretty good. And there's nothing unusual in that. It's not like we received a later, a later revenue earlier. This is just how it's been steadily progressing. So that's a, that's a good sign. State aid, there's always, it is what it is. Uh, there's really nothing more we can do. We just accept what they send to us. Um, we are at 76.52% of what we anticipated. That compares to 74% of the prior two years. That's pretty much what it is. Um, they divvy it up uh, among uh, throughout the year um, as however they want to. So that's pretty typical of what we've seen the last couple of years. So we expect to get that full amount in as well. So the, the that means we are at 76.5%. 3% of our FY23 projected revenues. 
which is pretty good for three quarters of the way through the year. And it's higher than the percentage we had collected in the prior two years. So we're doing all right. Um, we're doing what we anticipated to do. Now in the expenses, which is the next, which is the final green column there, um, expenses year to date are 14 million 0918 That is 71.75% of our total uh, budget. It, which is fine, that's less than three quarters of the way through the year. Um, the one thing to watch on that is last year at this time, we had only spent 66% of the budget and the year before just under 65%. So the spending is uh, relative to what has been uh, the last couple of years, we're a little bit ahead, which might mean there's be less in turn backs at the end of this year. Um, there's a, a few explanations of it. One, a couple are that we've been holding back. Departments have been holding back for the last couple of years, and there are some expenses that you know needed to be done. And uh, we don't know yet whether it's, um, I know Carolyn needs to decide whether she wants to, what kind of a memo she might send out to department heads uh, as far as spending for the rest of the year. But uh, it's not terribly higher. I mean, 71%, that's, that's still pretty good, but we are not expecting um, perhaps as large uh, an amount of turnovers this year, turn backs at the end of the year as we did in the last couple of years. And that what that does is impact free cash. So uh, there we are, the year to dates, so we're pretty much spot on. Uh, reminder that the bottom of this page um, under those blocks, Jennifer, the, the very bottom are, is there just a restatement of where we stand with free cash. Um, we spent money at that town meeting and a little bit over to the right, we have free cash balance after the special town meeting of $1.468 million, which means that's the amount of money that we are taking into the spring annual town meeting. The next one, and I don't have any prints of this, I don't have any extras, <clears throat> but um, they are set up exactly the same way. So once again, if uh, we just make the green columns larger, that should, Keep me. That should be adequate. One second. Um, Everybody can see my email, sorry. Which one are you doing first, water or sewer? Pardon me? Water or sewer? Uh, water or whichever one comes up. <laughs> water it is. <laughs> I'll make it as easy as I can. There, we've got water. <clears throat> so um, the water, what has been received in user fees this year is uh, just over a million dollars, 1052371 in that first column. Again, FY23 uh, figures are in green. The other revenue that is collected, 42,314. So our total water revenues year to date are 1,094,684. Now uh, it's interesting, that's 84.63% of what was anticipated is at, um, at this, of, of what is projected for the year, 84% of what's projected for the year. It's more than what was anticipated because you can see in FY22, we were at 79% of the um, what was expected. And for FY21, it was 80, uh, 84%. Oh, so it's very comparable actually to 21. It's just higher than last year. So the spending um, is really pretty much in line what it was the last couple of years, 60 expenses of 816,590 so far, puts us at 60.44% of the budget, well under three quarters. One thing to remember in all the enterprise funds is that we take that final figure for uh, town charges at the end of the year. So we have the, lar the largest uh, spending quarter is always that last quarter. Um, this compares, this 60% co compares to 57% of the budget spent at this time last year and pretty much the same 60.61% spent in 21. And that's it for the water, uh, except at the bottom, again, the reserves that we're going into um, the Springtown meeting with for water reserves is $1,133,541. Okay. So that is like for water. That's good. Mm -hmm. And the next is uh, where we stand in sewer. Everyone has to be just a little different. Here we go. Okay. FY23 of the green columns, year to date, 
user fees, 563,058. Other revenues, 114,704. For total year-to-date revenues of 677,762. You drop down and see that means for our actual percentages of what was projected for the year, 67.22. That's a little less than the percentage last year. No, it's a bit up, up 5% less. Last year, we had collected 72% of the um, projections in the year before 67%. So we're in there between, um, we're more comparable to 21 and 22, but I don't think there's anything um, very significant about that. So um, I think once again, we always like to look at these to see that our projections are okay, that we didn't over project the revenues for the year and we didn't squeeze the, uh, the budgets or over budget too much. That's another reason it might be at a uh, higher percentage this year with the expenditures that is that we did uh, push down on some of the ex, um, on some of the budgeting for 23. So that's the thing with when you're dealing with a percentage. Uh, it's only as good as your total figure. So um, are there any questions? Oh, I did want to point out too on the sewer. I'm sorry, don't go back, Jennifer. Sorry uh, that we're going into uh, these uh, the Springtown meeting with. Uh, $255,604 in reserves. That's pretty low. It's sufficient to get through this year. We were planning to uh, spend uh, some of the reserves for getting through 23. And uh, this is the primary reason that there were adjustments made to these sort of water rates at um, two or three meetings ago for you so that we can better cover the operational costs in both water and sewer and begin to make better plans for the capital spending in those areas. All right. So, any questions? Are we all set? No, thank you. Okay. Thank you for the update. David? Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, great. I apologize for any background noise. I had baseball duty last night. I had softball uh, duty, so you might hear some kids in the background. But um, our finance committee budget that we voted on last night is very similar to the town administrator's budget as presented with a few changes that we made last night. Uh, one of our goals was to keep showing a positive trend in increasing OPEB while also reducing our reliance on free cash. So last night we voted to set the OPEB contribution at 180, and that's up 10,000 from last year. Not a huge amount, but at least it's in the right direction. And uh, it, that helped to reduce uh, some free cash utilization as well. Um, we also, for, the, I, I believe it's the HR, the employee, um, uh, Linda, what, what's the name of the fund for the benefits when they're leaving? Employee buyback. Okay, the employee buyback fund. Uh, we voted to seed that with $10,000 initially based on the projected $3,500 for this year. Um, and then going forward, make it a line item um, in the budget for future contributions into that fund so we can build up it in case there's a, a larger payout in the future, which, you know, I'm sure there will be. Um, trying to think, I think those are the main highlights, um, but those, those are the changes that we made last night. Uh, we voted on all the warrant articles as well and supported all of them with the exception of two CPA articles. We held off on that because we were told there were some changes coming possibly. I believe it's 18 and 19 on, on the warrant. Thank you. Are there any questions? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find the... Um, so what, what did the OPEB change from to? 180 up to 10,000. Oh, yeah. Oh, $10,000. 10,000. 10, okay. Yeah, we went down. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not as much as we had wished, but to, in order to accomplish both goals of reducing free cash and increasing OPEB, we kind of had to split the difference. Still certainly more than other towns have been doing for sure. So we're, we're in there. So that's good. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Um, does the finance committee need to end their meeting? We need to take a we, vote. We need oh. to take a vote. Oh, you need to take a vote. I'm sorry. So we need to uh, vote, David. We need to vote on uh, actual have a uh, physical vote on um, Article Eight as as the budget is presented because Linda wanted to put the number of 
together. So um, I would make a motion on the finance committee to accept um, the budget as presented. All right. Okay. As, as presented as we voted on it or as presented before we made the amendments? No, as pre as presented as we voted on, as we looked, right. as right. we talked about with the adjustments. Right. Right. Okay. So just, just wanted to clarify. And also Shardul was here. We should welcome him as well. Yeah. And then Paul, did you want to second that? Yes, I'll second that. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, motion by Amy, second by Paul. Any other discussion from the Finance Committee? Okay, I'll uh, roll call. Uh, Amy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Chardul? Yes. Andy? Yes. And yes for me as well. Thank you. And then does the select board or anybody else have anything for the finance committee? Nothing but thanks for what you've done. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Appreciate well, thank it. Thank you. Um, and that, you need a motion? Yep. Paul, it's your turn. Okay, I make a motion to adjourn tonight's finance committee meeting. Were you going to vote on, I mean, whatever we're going to do with article 18 and 19? I don't know what we're doing with that either at this point. Well, when it's when it comes in, they're going to vote on it. Right. I'm, I'll be able to give you an update. Okay. That's the one. Do you have a second? Vote on it. I just need I, I second. <laughs> okay, motion by Paul, second by Amy, and I'll just roll call it. Amy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Chardul? Yes. Andy? Yes. And um, yes as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Thank you, you all. Bye. Sweet. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, Jane, did you want me to give you just an update of our discussion that this uh, finance committee had? About 18 and 19. 18 and 19. Yes, sure. It's similar to what I explained last week. I, I explained the, the meeting with a consultant and um, the uh, questions that I had gotten from members of the select board as well as the residents to look at that, having the feasibility um, be the primary, um, the next step. And so I explained to them, as I'll explain to you, I anticipate that you will see that be emerged in a sense. One, um, it would be one article and it would be the feasibility with the hope of um, the CPA approving a C uh, feasibility study. Do they have another meeting? They, Mary is going to be back next week. So they will be, Russell School is um, going to be meet to make um, recommendations to, uh, to the CPA and the CPA will meet as well. Should, I just can't should, speak should on behalf be, of either should board. Should it be the select board making the re recommendation to the CPA? What for? I mean, mm, it, it well, is, it, I think it should come from select board. I don't think it should come from... Uh, committee that was formed you you've appointed the russell school committee so it is a select board that would be your decision do we want to have another meeting with the cpa or do we want to have russell school do it i mean i i hear what joyce is saying that committees are not the select board spends the money the committees do the uh background information collecting i mean they can come to next week's meeting yeah, I mean, it seems like we should have some involvement rather than well, just a committee I think doing it. Write the article, and then we choose whether we recommend it or not. Right, a town meeting. Probably, probably be you look like you want to talk so bad. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I think it would be best to work with them to create the article rather than get it to a point where it might need to be amended on town meeting floor. So. I would be in favor of meeting with them so we could iron this out. By them, Russell School Committee and CPA collectively, or just Russell School Committee? Well, I think the Russell School Committee is the one that's making the request mm -hmm. of the CPA. So as I understand it, we would just work with Russell School um, Committee, and then they would go to the CPA and ask for the money. Right. Yeah. I'm just wondering in the spirit of time, I mean, we're really running out of real estate here. Um, would it make sense to try to have all parties together and just hash it out in one conversation? It's fine with me, Molly. I, I don't I don't care what if CPA is willing. Yeah, I'd say if they're willing. I mean, they're obviously an independent committee. They don't, but if we could find a time 
I could email the two chairs to see if both that could be a combined meeting. All right. That'd so great. we're looking at next week. Um, when's Mary back? With Monday. Seventeenth. She said she'd be back. Plus. So we're looking at the 19th. So yes, that would cover that. I will be here via Zoom. Thank you. If you can get off the beach. Yeah, I, I probably can. Too much sun's <laughs> not good for me. You got your hat. Yeah. All right. So we will put that um, <clears throat> conversation next week. All right. All right. Uh, Annual Town Report and Fred Oakley Award. Jennifer? Um, so we have received two nominations for the dedication of the Town Report. Uh, the first one is Adolf Pichinski, and the second one is um, Joe and Shelley Boysford are the, the two nominations that, that we've received the dedication of the Town Report. And we've received one nomination for the Oakley, the Fred W. Oakley, or does it W. Fred Oakley? For the Oakley Award for volunteerism, um, we've received um, actually a couple for Rosalie and Alan Weinberg. Um, when I looked them up, it seemed like they had definitely served on enough of these in town. <laughs> yeah, certainly is. Yes. Yeah. All right, so let's let's go on the Oakley Award. Do I have a motion? I think. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the nomination for Alan Weinberg and uh, Rosalie. Second. Second by Joyce. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now on to the um, town report dedication. Yes. We have a couple or we have a ex-Hadley resident. Ex Hadley resident, deceased Hadley. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> wrong word. <laughs> oh, I can tell you the yeah. um, the nominations we received were um, for Adolf Wojcinski. Stated that he is the former police chief um, and that he was a longtime resident of the town. Um, and for the boys' works, it was uh, the nomination I received for them was about the dedication that they showed for the town of Hadley and supporting different events. Um, they pointed out the fundraiser they're doing for the pancake breakfast for the officer Romano. They pointed out um, everything that they donate to the town when there's events and things like that. So that's why uh, they were nominated is because they feel like the boys Burks and North Hadley Sugar Shack really are supporting the town. So that's why they were nominated. Um, so. Well, it's not unlikely that we've ever not dedicated the town report to two people. Um, mm -hmm. since one has passed, um, what's the word I want? Pos pos posthumously. Posthumously, um, that we could dedicate to Mr. Kipchinski and also to Shelly and Joe Boysvert. Um, they not only do other fundraisers, but they have schools that come in and are, learn about sugaring. Um, Joe actually started sugaring when he was a student at Hopkins Academy. So, I mean, it goes a long way back. He was discouraged, I might say, by our guidance counselor that he wouldn't make a go of it. Well, didn't he surprise him? <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's kind of nice to see success on our Hadley residents. And, you know, they give tours of their maple and sugar into schools and things of that nature, too. So, well, then I'll ask you to help me write the dedication mm -hmm. today. I'd be happy to. Okay. So, we're having a, a a double dedication. I mean, if they so all that's agree. That's pleasure. If yeah. you go decide that. One in memorandum and one mm -hmm. two people that can that accept it. Good. Yeah, that's, that seems fair. I have a motion. So moved. Do have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you all. Police department. We're not taking that up and we're not taking the library up either. All right, good. That's, I'm sorry. I thought those were removed. Lead service line inventory and replacement. Is Scott here? Scott is here he to was. explain that. And I'll explain the motion, but I would like Scott to explain that. Scott? In that program. Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, so this is something that's being pushed from, from MassDEP that uh, yeah. they want us to uh, 
investigate all the uh, service lines in town and determine if there is any uh, lead service lines in our system. Uh, so originally this was uh, an article. We were going to have to go for an article for a reimbursement process, but they changed this to a grant. So uh, we're, <clears throat> we're uh, going forward for the grant to get this funded. Uh, I don't have the number in front of me, but it, it's pretty uh, significant money to do this project. I mean, if they had taken a look at all of our lines <laughs> that are over 100 years old, um, I'm hoping they're going to cough up some money to help us uh, either reline them or do something with them as we have done on some of our other lines. And you're well, saying, yeah. A grant. So whether we get the grant or not, it's a, it's a, it's a grant and or a loan. Yeah. So is this grant just to do the assessment, or is it to do the assessment and then some money to do some uh, fix-ups? This is only the assessment. Uh, th th this, uh, there's a deadline on this, and they have not talked about giving any money yet for repair work. So. I'm sure once the assessments start coming back, uh, I'm sure the state will probably be handing out some more money. Uh, they're going to have to because the uh, smaller systems, you, you just can't afford to do this. It, it's a very expensive project. Uh, well, we certainly need an assessment and that puts us in a good position when the money comes available. So I think support this. Yeah, th th this is a mandate from the state. We don't have a choice on this. It's so it's just, there's funding available. Of course it is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. You want me to read this motion? Yes. Read the Go motion. Okay. okay. So the motion is, whereas the Hadley Select Board, after thorough investigation, has determined that the work activity consisting of lead service line inventory and replacement plan is both in the public interest and necessary to protect the public health, and that to undertake this activity, it is necessary to apply for assistance. And whereas... The Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, MassDEP, and the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, the trust of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, pursuant to Chapter 21 and Chapter 29C of the General Laws of the Commonwealth, Chapter 21 and Chapter 29C, are authorized to make loans to municipalities for the purpose of funding planning and construction activities relative to drinking water protection projects. And whereas the applicant has examined the provisions of the Act, Chapter 21 and Chapter 29C, and believes it to be in the public interest to file a loan application, now therefore be it resolved by the Hadley Select Board as follows. One, that the Director of Public Works is hereby authorized on behalf of the applicant to file applications and execute agreements for grant and or loan assistance as well as furnishing such information, data, and documents pertaining to the applicant for a grant and or loan as may be required, and otherwise to act as the authorized representative of the applicant in connection with this application. Two, that the purpose of said loan, if awarded, shall be to planning activities. Three, that if said award is made, the applicant agrees to pay those costs which constitute the required applicant share of the project cost. Second. I have a second by Amy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Oh, thank you. All right. The Historical Commission signs. Uh, who's going to speak to this? I see Diana, Diana West. West Perfect. Perfect. I wonder Hi, why everyone. You... If you don't Diana. know me, I'm Diana West, and I'm the chairperson of the Hadley Historical Commission. And I'm here to speak with you tonight about a project we've been working on for a couple of years now. And that is that we applied for CPA funding for a three-pronged project. One is historical marker signs, uh, an update to the West Street walking tour, and then also an audio driving tour. We've specifically come before you. As a select board, we'll need to approve the sign locations as we would like to erect them on public property. To provide some more background information, we wanna put up four signs, one in Hockenham, one in the center of town by the Goodwin Memorial Building, one on the West Street Common, and one in North Hadley Village. And those also coincide with our listings on the National uh, Historic Registry. 
We originally wanted to create a trail throughout town with a bunch of signs, but then we determined that that was unsafe due to constant stopping of vehicles and with limited spaces to safely park. We had a study done by Berkshire Design Group at Northampton, and they made the recommendation to place these signs on public property at the Hockenham Schoolhouse, Goodwin Memorial Building, by the bike path on the Common, and near where Mount Warner Road and River Drive meet up in North Hadley. The DPW director recommended we move the one in front of Goodwin Memorial Building more to the south to be away from a young tree. These locations have been identified as spots that you can safely pull off the road and park to view the sign. We had a study done by Fossil Industries out of Deer Park, New York, that suggested signs be 24 inches by 36 inches and be vertical and be on eight foot tall posts, six feet of which would be above the ground. This provides for better visibility, better weathering, and it gives us a double-sided opportunity to have the signs both in English and Spanish. Hadley isn't really known as a walking community, so we wanted to be able to entice people to, who are driving by to stop, park, read the signs, hence their size and height. This will in turn generate more revenue in Hadley as people will be staying here longer, hopefully visiting our restaurants, small businesses, and cultural institutions. The planning board approved the signs and locations at their December 5th meeting, and the CPA is recommending to town meeting that CPA funds be used to the, erect the signs. We have also been in touch with the building commissioner's office, and they said they will help us with the application process once we are ready to erect the signs. And when that time comes, we will continue to work with the DPW to ensure final location. Any questions? They look very nice. Any questions? Thank you. No, very impressive, Diana. Yep. Very Thank nice. You. I know how many years you've been working on this. <laughs> All right, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Um, moved by Molly, second by Joyce. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right. So Thank like you very much. All right. The select board will discuss the town volunteer and elect boards and committee's responsibilities. Molly, do you want to lead this, please? Uh, sure. Yep. So in the spirit of trying to uh, button up our open meeting law compliance, um, there, there were some ideas that came up um, at the last meeting. But I think the, the overarching goal is that we recognize that there are so many volunteers, um, which is wonderful, um, who participate in the running of this town. Uh, it's an awful lot to ask of them to be fully familiar with open meeting law, understand what's required to post meetings, what to do when something doesn't go right, which it often does. Um, we've had these, you know, Zoom hybrid, all of this. Um, so I think uh, what seems to make sense, uh, did a little bit of investigating, and found out that there are other municipalities who actually have um, uh, committee handbooks. And within those committee handbooks, there is a plethora of information about how to comply, um, <laughs> make sure that um, you know it links to the open meeting law, and it talks through exactly what you need to do to have a meeting properly posted and all of that. So um, I've been working with Carolyn and, and Carolyn took a look. There's one in particular that um, we're quite fond of at the moment. So it seems like a logical next step that if we could um, make this appropriate for Hadley, bring it back to the board to see if the board would like to, um, you know, make, make this a policy going forward. Then what we can do is make sure that all existing committees get the handbook sign and sign off on it. Um, and we can talk about whether that should be the chair's responsibility or, you know, whatever. But just make sure that people aren't just throwing it in the drawer, that they acknowledge that they understand it. Um, and then uh, the other thing that we talked about is not every committee is subject to open meeting law. I think the default is you probably are, but there are instances, and it's actually in this handbook, about when you don't have to necessarily follow open meeting law. Um, and go through an inventory of all of our existing committees, making sure everybody knows which side of that fence they fall on. Um, and to the extent that there are any deficiencies, um, just make sure that we we button that up um, as a project this year. That would be great because we've been working on committees. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is another piece of that work of getting our committees, uh, what shall we say, more readily figured out, understood, and communicated with. Yeah. Any questions? 
So you will bring something to a future meeting with this proposal? Yep, yep. I'll work yep. with Carolyn on that. And I'm, I'm happy to also just, um, it happens to be the town of Middleton, Massachusetts. It's Rip and Read right off of their website. Um, but, you know, I can certainly attach that in an email and just send it out if you want to look at it in advance, knowing that that's kind of what we're leveraging off of. It's that overdue. would be good. Mm -hmm. It's overdue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Plagiarism mm -hmm. is very popular in municipal government. Why not? <laughs> it's free. <laughs> oh, nothing is so, free. Jane, if I can also add to that, there is a training that I sent out to all the select boards and departments regarding an open meeting law. Um, so I just want to encourage people to attend that. And um, also a reminder, and Lisa Mead, our town council, has also um, reminded us as well that they will do a training for all of all employees, all uh, volunteers. So I think that would be a grand idea. That way we could get a feel for who actually is interested in learning about this stuff. Yeah. And so. All right. Other items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Town administrator's report? Yeah, if I can, we've been, obviously it's warrant in budget time. So um, we have been working, Jennifer, Linda and I have been working on this warrant. Um, the only change that I did want right now, um, we're waiting on two different articles, um, but we did add some planning articles in tonight and these still have to go to town council. But we are, as far as Birch Meadow Drive Private Way, there's a, we have two, private ways that fit the same criteria that would be a taking because there's no longer um, a contractor involved that we are, it's gonna take some, several more steps that we can't do before town meeting, but we're gonna combine those together for the special town meeting. Okay. So I wanted to update you about that. Um, what about the uh, the planning, the two planning articles that they were both relative to... <laughs> do I say the word? I, I don't I don't remember. Food truck? Yeah, food truck. So there was a question of what order they should be in on the yep, on the warrant. We got that settled. Okay, great. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, we got that settled. Okay. All right. The wage and comp study. Our orientation was today by Zoom, so we had several many employees, and it, it was recorded. So that will take place. I will keep you guys updated as well because you are going to be the overseer of this. As certainly as job descriptions get filled in, um, we want to make sure that that job descriptions are really what the position is, not for the person. She really reiterated that today. We wanna to make sure that employees aren't creating a position that may not have all of those responsibilities. So I just wanna assure you that not only will I have oversight, but you will have oversight through each phase of, of the, the project. Okay. So um, the Bay Road culvert bids are in um, and the award, their contract's gonna be awarded next week. Um, our email transition to .gov is underway. What are we thinking as a? It takes two weeks behind the scenes and then it'll go live. Um, but the, they're they're already doing things behind the scenes right now uh, to make it as painless as possible for everybody. <laughs> so it's happening. And then the phones, if you want to talk about the phones as well. Yes, the phones. Um, the phones, we are going to do an upgrade to a new system. Uh, the, current, the current one, we're just, we've run into so many um, hiccups, if you will, that have just made the system not the best for the town overall. So we're looking at just upgrading the system to a better product. And turns out the better product is also going to save us about $400 a month. So um, we're pretty excited about this. Uh, and, and this is, again, the phone system throughout the whole town, excluding the schools. But it connects the DPW to the public safety to town hall. We're all just a three-digit extension. And I, I I have to say, I know Chief Mason's a really big fan of it. And I am too, that that interconnectivity with the town. Just can't say enough for communication. There's also a public safety issue. That was the oh, main driver. I apologize. The public safety it was not. We were losing connection. Yeah. So that was the biggest driver, which is why we moved so quickly, honey. Yeah. E911. I'm sorry. Yep. I got that part. Yep. So, and I did want to let you know, we did have... Um, a forum scheduled for Friday for the Hawk signal, but there was too many conflicting schedules. Um, the teacher that is the teacher for the eighth <clears throat> class, who was really what we were working with, so that they could be a part of that. Um, she'll be leaving um, for maternity leave for 
for a while. So we're going to still keep in contact with who's subbing for that eighth grade class, but um, I will keep you updated as that. And that, that the role of that was to let people know what Mass DOT was doing, what the select board, you guys had met with Mass DOT. So just giving the public an update that, that it has not been forgotten. There has been some changes and we're continuing to look at it. But also if you go to the website, um, and let people know if you can go to the town's website and it will show you how to use a hawk signal and what it means because it we all agree it's a little confusing so yep. it's a good resource and they're putting one up by the bike path yes on south maple yep. street north maple street people, south, south maple street south maple people do not understand i've watched i watched two people go through the one at cumberland just recently yeah every day yeah. Go through there, yeah twice a day some people just Maybe don't know. We need more awareness if we have yes, that spare officer occasionally <clears throat> all right yeah, all right else. that's it sherry you missed public comment did you have anything you wanted <laughs> okay thank you historical committee thank now you. you have to leave <laughs> <laughs> so no we're leaving we're going in the other room oh we are going right. in the other room so may i have a no, wait i have to read i have i have, really I have, have one announcements. i have one okay. one, announcements. one comment Okay. Um, today, Henry Bai, who uh, was recognized as the telecommunicator of the year for the entire state of Massachusetts. Uh, Henry is a lifelong resident of Hadley, as well as our longest standing dispatcher with a total of 48 years at our station as of this year. He was nominated by our dispatch supervisor, Megan Cahill. Um, please join us in congratulating Henry and receiving this once in a lifetime achievement that he accepted at the state house in Boston this afternoon. Wow. So yeah. thank you, Hank. Awesome. And for all you have shared with us and all you have done for our town, we appreciate you being there when we need you in your dedication. So thank you. And congratulations. And congratulations. Henry. Pretty impressive. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't see my formal reading here, but I see part of it. The chair declares that piece is, piece is missing. Oh. <clears throat> just one second. This is not my best. to reconvene an open session until dot dot dot. <laughs> yeah, that's very specific. Yeah, the motion and say if the chair so declares and then she can declare it. Say that again. Would you make the motion, Molly? <laughs> I'll make a motion that we move into executive session for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to pending litigation, namely Britain versus Bombardier at Alia, Land Court Docket Number 21, I'm MISC. On. 000452 in parens DRR, where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the town if the chair so declares. I declare. Second. Do we roll call vote? Mm -hmm. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Sunglow? Yes. Nevinson? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. All right. Thank you.